Hello there, welcome back to another episode of World of Tanks from Gany Titan. So this time I want to look at the 40 TP Habitcha. The tier 6 Polish medium tank. So that I these are stock games. Um I've only had a couple of games, probably four or five. Stock and then it's moved on to the second uh, tier, which I don't think makes any difference to the gun. It was actually a pleasant surprise, considering its two predecessors. Particularly the two predecessors stock, who have utterly trash guns. Now, the bad news I suppose we should get out of the way first. It's a very sluggish tank. It can actually get up a decent lick of speed, as you can see on the flat ground, starting out here in Pearl River. But that's the only time I think you'll see it in these two, the two games that I'm going to show, uh, performing or moving at any kind of velocity. It just really slows down. Well, I suppose once it gets moving, it's not so bad. But when you slow down and try and speed up again, and you're on poor terrain on hills or on, um, I suppose, places, the soft stats must be really bad in this tank. I haven't really checked it out, but they seem to be. Um, must be on a poor side because it just is actually very slow. Right? When well, we were losing speed here and losing it quite rapidly, like we were uh, doing what 58 kilometers going down the hill and about 34, 35 on the flat ground, and we're now down to 12. And this isn't a bad slope, like 10. We're struggling, like. So stock is pretty underpowered. Armour is, is okay. Uh, we're at tier, so this tank will actually perform quite well at tier. Um, I haven't really played much against high tiers yet. Gun depression is actually quite good. It's 8 degrees of gun depression, which is uh, something I'm not used to so far in these tanks, and uh, quite happy with it. So, it's actually quite effective here in this corner. We've got pretty good gun depression, and we're able to get in around the corner. And the gun is not too bad. The bloom isn't excessive. Um, you know, it's kind of average for the tier. And the penetration's okay. Now, it will. I think it will probably struggle against the stock gun will struggle against the higher tier tanks. But it was okay again when you're top tier. And that's kind of as much as you expect out of a stock gun, like in most cases. And the gun handling is uh, it's not terrible. So and it's going to improve. Now the view range is the other one that's really terrible. It's 330 meters of view range in the stock tank. It's about the same view range as the Churchill. Uh, in fact, I think the Churchill 7 there in front of me possibly has better view range, but that's a higher tier tank. So, some of the medium tank kind of rolls, this thing won't really perform because it's, um, it's just one of the view range. It won't be able to spot people shooting at it. So you can't really operate it independently. You're going to have to need to stick with people. That said, in the next match, you're going to see me get a patrol duty on this tank on Prokhorovka. Now, think about that for a minute. So we've managed to clear out this corner. We've... Um, pretty much broken the back of the enemy team. There's a couple of them left, so the major threat now is coming up from um, A7, that direction. So we're coming around here, and again you see the speed. It imp improves going down the hill, but not very impressive on the flat ground or on the rising ground. The so VK3601, he bounced, bounced a shot off me. And, you know, I'm given as good as I, I guess, which is against a heavy tank, isn't it? It's pretty decent, especially when you're in front of it, like, so I think, you know, overall, I am satisfied enough with the, the thing, with the performance, shall we say, this tank. And I think it'll, it gets better, it will get better, because obviously the um, the mobility, there's, there's an engine upgrade, there are track upgrades, there are, there's a gun upgrade eventually. And... Um, turret upgrade which will result in a better frontal uh, armor on the turret but also better uh, view range i think it finishes up a 360 meter view range which is not great but it's no worse than a t3485 or i think t3485 might actually be worse than the number good it's 350 and that's workable you know you can work with the t3485 so you should be able to work with this 
So I'm coming out across the bridge. At this stage, there's only two tanks left. It doesn't really matter that much if we split up. And I reckon I have much business on the high ground because uh, I won't see anything. If anything's back in the cap circle, it'd probably be too far away for me to see it. I'm going to fight, give, especially if it's not moving, uh, it's in a camouflaged position. So I'm most likely to find stuff because they shoot at me. The artillery could, well, it mightn't out spot me, but it might because the artillery's got pretty good camouflage. So I could be in the artillery spotting zone before uh, I'll be able to overcome the camouflage value of the artillery. However, the fire, I'll know, I'll know that they're there, that sort of thing, because the firing really reduces your camouflage. So, the artillery isn't here in the town in the low section, so it's probably up behind those buildings there on my uh, left. And just spotted something, and there is the M4. And I think I managed to get the sh first shot off in spite of that, and we bounced one of them. But the M4 is doomed because there's heavy tank moving in, there's uh, tank destroyers coming in from his rear. And the artillery has just given away its position as well and it's going to be shot at as well. The people on the ridge line are probably going to get it before I do because I'm just not fast enough. Um, despite the fact that I'm the closest tank to it. And again, yes, another shot from the ridge line from one of the tank destroyers probably. And there it is, he's gone. So we have um, a victory, and I think it was a reasonable performance on a stock tank. So we got 1,100 damage. Second class mastery. Uh, we only got one kill on 95 assisted, but then I wouldn't expect to get a lot of assisted damage out of this tank. It just doesn't have the view range or the visibility. Now, stock definitely won't perform as well against higher tier tanks. But this game I just wanted to show because it's Prokhorovka. It's the stock uh, 40 TP with the 330 meters of view range and I get a patrol duty. Now I do have a couple of things going for me. I am top tier, so I'm not facing bottom tier tanks. The problem with facing bottom tier tanks here is that uh, if you were facing tier 8s, for instance, they'd be doing tier 8 mediums. We'd be doing about 240, 250 average damage. And essentially two hits, well, three hits would kill me. Some of the tier 8 uh, heavies actually be doing more. In fact, there's one two of the Russian. A little bit of tier 8 lights. Do something like 300 average damage or something like that. 100 millimeter guns. The LTT, LTGs and LTTPs. They actually have pretty impressive guns. So, anyway, we're here. We're pushing up to the ridge line. We're not alone at the start, but the company doesn't last for long because they make the mistake. You see, the thing is. I keep saying this, what the T-3485 doing is doing is actually doing the right thing. He's exposing very little of his tank, and he's not attempting to shoot the people in front of him. He's coming up high enough to spot someone, and he's shooting the people that are coming up high on the ridge, uh, parallel to him. Like, like I try to shoot that KV-1S. Now the KV-1S is sufficiently well armoured that my gun is struggling against him with regular ammunition. But it doesn't matter. I'm spotting him, and the people behind me are shooting, because there's loads of people behind me, and if I can, if we spot it, he's on top of the ridge, see there again that, uh, that um, tank destroyer, you more or less instantly annihilate the KV-2, similarly, he's just going to burn down, because again, for a KV-2 to shoot anybody from across the top of the ridge, the entire tank has to be on top of the ridge, KV-2 has Four or five degrees of under four degrees or so, something like that of gun depression. It's utter madness. The tanks like that stay down, they stay low. Same as what I'm doing here. You stay low on the ridge line. You're just there to spot the enemy as they crest the ridge. If you want to spot there's no point in me going up on top of the ridge to spot the enemies at the back. I'm not gonna see the enemies at the back. If there's people parked back along the K line. 
No matter how long I sit on top of the ridge, there's no way I'll see them. I'd have to be down as far as the G-Lane before I'd be able to spot them. If they have any kind of reasonable camouflage. So, I've managed to pick up 12 um, spotting ribbons already. Now it's just 702 damage, but, you know, it still all adds up. So now we're starting to push down the western side of the map. We're pushing... Pushing... Well, there's a medium tank down there as well. They're not spotting anything. But they're heading into an area of vulnerability and they're crossing too soon. Because they, they're now vulnerable. They're not probably far south enough to spot people on the back row. But they're going to get spotted by the medium. And he's gone down into the low ground. So that he's protected from them. Now they've spotted a tank and artillery. And that artillery is forward. More forward than I would have expected. Which is why I'm coming up on the ridge lane. But I get spotted. And I thought, okay, there's no point in me uh, pushing any further. Because if I push any further, I'll just get shot at. And there's an SU-85. It looks like he was coming up on the railway from the other side. I was on the hill and going down to the lake, I don't know. Because I would be vulnerable too to fire from the hill if it was far forward enough. So we keep going around, we keep circling around, we've managed so far to evade the artillery that have had a fair bit of attention to us. So there's the M4. Uh, and he's staying low as well, which is I think a relatively sensible thing to be doing. Now this is still anybody's game. Um, the only thing is we seem to be dominating on the field. And also I think some of the those two tank destroyers at the edge of the lake are completely mispositioned. So it looks to me like the enemy have abandoned the hill and they're now actually caught in a crossfire uh, between the railway and the lake. And there might not be many tanks in front of me. The medium on the west is pushing right down on the edge of the road, which is the right thing to do. You don't come across in the middle, you go right down. Uh, and then you can see along the back row. So there's a uh, flak bus down there. We're going to get some decent shots into him because he is a glass cannon. Okay, he's got a big dangerous gun. But I can... Um, once he's spotted and hit highlight, the guy across the map can see him. I saw him, and I get slapped by artillery. That's the slowest and sp slowness of the speed, the fact that I'm the only guy up here. The rock is probably saving me, though, because the other artillery probably couldn't hit me from that location. And there's another Ikea down there as well. So, I need to get around. Just barely have a glimpse of the M40. Um... I think the M40 must have moved, M44 rather, must have moved. Because I'd say that round would have hit him if he had held his position. But see, the thing is, the way he disappeared, because he's at the edge of my view range. And there he is, he's lit up again. The tank on the west is dead, but the guys, um, Chris and the original, spotted him, I'd say. And the Ikea is coming for me. But you see, I'm not moving, so I can be aiming in on him. While he's still struggling to bring his gun to bear. That's the advantage of, you know, being the, uh, the defender, she would say, in those circumstances. So there's only one enemy tank remaining, and um, not at all sure where he is. I know a round crossed my position shortly before that, but I was still kind of, wasn't too sure at the time what direction the round crossed me from. Now I think from re-watching the video, I'm pretty sure the round came in from the west, from, from my right. But I wasn't taking any chances. Uh, if the Bertie Avenger wants to go scout, I reckon Bertie Avenger is quite likely to go scout if that's what he wants to do. And he's, he's definitely faster than me. I can't really stop him. And I th thought at the time that his view range was probably as good as mine, but it isn't. It's actually 310 me meters distinct from the 330 meters that I've got. But it's not exactly anything great. But Bert will be up and down the west side of the map um way more you know in a lot less time it will take me actually to do uh, the same journey in fact i'll barely be across the map by the time bert has actually covered both ends however if the t34 85 was over here it's given us the slip because this is not where we find them 
So basically I see my job as providing overwatch for Bert. While Bert runs around the map like a lunatic searching for um, an enemy medium tank. Um, I don't know how confident he is. Like He's obviously fairly confident, but or doesn't care. You know, the game's over, he's not risking the team or anything. I mean, the odds are very much in the T-34-85 if Bert catches him. But, you know, if he wins, then it's a real spectacular feather in his cap and it'll probably look great on a YouTube video. But the T-34-85 has been found by other people. Well, he's found himself. He actually has um, come after the guys in the cap circle. I don't know if he got a cap reset or not, but he's uh, the guys have decided to chase after him anyway. And I rush mightily. Oh, I'm up to 20, 20, oh, oh, down to 12 again. I briefly hit 30 kilometers an hour there. And um, see if I can get my gun into the uh, final, the final, bringing the T-3485 to bay. He's baying away there, and uh, we got one shot off, but my loader is dead, so I'm not going to get a second one. And that's it, game over. So, 1659 spotting damage, 19 spotting ribbons. The rest is just bonus jam. Um, Who would have thought it? In a practically blind tank, on Prokhorovka. One of the biggest, widest fields in the game. And there we have it, there's our spotting ribbon for over a thousand damage, spotting damage, second class mastery, and there's our patrol duty, which is uh, only awarded to people who have spotted at least six enemy tanks, and they're the only ones spotting enemy tanks, to which your allies have damaged. So just spotting tanks is no good. Your allies have to actually shoot at the tanks as well. So it's kind of harder to get than a scout medal, and far more useful to your team, because obviously you're in a position, you've spotted tanks, and the enemy the allies are shooting at them so the overall verdict well it was a pleasant surprise really uh, I was kind of surprised but so far it looks like a relatively decent tank and I certainly will look forward to interest to how it develops and evolves when I get the higher level packages thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did give it a like and a share feel free to comment if you've not already done so please subscribe to the channel I will catch you all again soon. Bye for now.